Hi, this is JP from Not Lights Over Arkham. This time we are concluding the InSmart Conspiracy campaign run with Stella Clark and we are playing the Into the Maelstrom scenario that just arrived here in Finland, so I finally got it after a long wait. And uh, let's get into the uh, setup for this scenario. So I'm just quickly going through first uh, the micro setup that we need to do. So depending on uh, different story assets or different uh, uh, additions to your campaign log, you begin your game with a couple of keys in play or none if you are doing <laughs> really badly. Uh, we were lucky enough to have uh, two keys in play. And uh, there are the green and the yellow, then either the white, black or purple key, so one of those keys is missing, it's over here, and I've already randomized these, so I don't know which is which. So that is the setup and uh, different things that I won't go into in detail, uh, affect which keys you begin the game with. Then of course, because we did quite well in the Light in the Fox scenario, we are starting the game with the diving suit in play. I'll go over the diving suit uh, later in more detail. Other than that, uh, we set up the scenario and uh, we follow the scenario set up in the pamphlet. Uh, we did do some changes into Stella's deck, so I have uh, six experience to spend to upgrades. I decided to upgrade the other lucky level 2 to level 3. Then I decided to remove both of the rabbit's foot and add a test of will level 1s into the deck. This is because I found out that I rarely need the card draw from the rabbit's foot in this stage of the game or the campaign. And uh, because now I have a free accessory slot, I added the nightmare bubble, which is a quite strong card that it cancels the auto fail uh, sometimes, so you might need it in a clutch situation. To make room for that, I decided to remove one of the belly of the beasts because that's maybe the least uh, used blue getting card in this deck. And that is the whole six experience, so this is the final deck for this campaign. No more uh, changes will be made into it. And that is basically it, so we can go back to the scenario. Uh, we have the teachings of the order here in play, but uh, we already spent everything on it in the last scenario, so we can just uh, basically ignore that. It doesn't do anything. The, the diving suit is uh, a three cost asset and it's a body slot asset. It's an item armor. Uh, you ignore the forced ability of the current agenda. We'll go through that in a moment. Forced when you when any amount of damage would be placed on you, place one of that damage to, on diving suit. Forced when the diving suit leaves play, remove it from the game. So it will break eventually if we take a lot of damage. And we again have the forced effect that if you start and end your game in a fully flooded location and don't go to a partially or um, unflooded location, you'll take five direct damage, so we ignore that as long as we have the diving suit in play. Then maybe the biggest thing uh, to note, uh, in the Act 1A there is an, actually a typo, so uh, this has been clear from uh, MJ, so objective if each investigator is at gateway of, of Yuan Tale and the investigators possess each of the following keys, blue, red, yellow and green advance. So uh, this was meant to be an, uh, not a mandatory thing to do, so you can choose when you advance. So uh, because we want to gather more keys uh, than we uh, start the game with. 
mm, there might be a situation that you already have all of the keys uh, per the setup instructions so you would just immediately advance from the act one to act two and you don't have the chance to gather some of the other keys which you will, will need to uh, do something else later in the uh, scenario so just to mention that that you can do that whenever you want not uh, whenever you immediately have the required uh, keys so keep that in mind when you're playing this scenario other than that uh, we start uh, at the gateway of Yuan Clay and uh, we have the tidal tunnel locations here so we need to go find some keys so let's get started And uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, at the end of the last scenario uh, we had to make a choice on which uh, resolution we would pick. So I decided that Stella as a survivor decided to lie to Osiris. So we added one extra tablet token into the bag. So the decks are uh, shuffle, so I'll draw my opening hand of five cards. Okay, so we get the track shoes, really nice. And Granny Orn is okay. Headdress is. Mm, it's okay, I think. I think uh, we need some investigative power, so I'm. Uh, mulligan those. I'm debating if I should mulligan the headdress also. It's actually not that important, so we'll draw four more. So we are looking for ways to investigate better because this is a, a race to the finish line, so to speak. So we want to get clues as fast as possible. So we get the Alter Fate, a test of will, uh, take her and Granny Orn. So our situation didn't get that much better with these additions. Well, it is what it is, and let's shuffle this back into the deck. Hopefully we draw into some way of investigating better later. So I think first action will be to play the uh, track shoes down. And I think that is it. We'll start looking for places to find clues. So second action will move and connections are like shown here so we are not connected uh, like from the corners of the card so only uh, north south east west so i think we'll start by going up so i'll move here and we find a new location which is the dark abyss it's a two shroud location with one clue post after dark abyss is revealed randomly choose one of the set aside face down keys and place it on dark abyss without looking at it Post after the last clue is discovered from Dark Abyss, Dark Abyss becomes fully flooded. Increase the flood level of each location connected to Dark Abyss. Okay, uh, so um, uh, one thing I forgot to do in the setup is that the gateway to Yuan Clay is partially flooded. So we'll just add that token there. So um, I decide not to move any further, so we'll add one clue here. And we'll pick one key at random. So I think I'm investigating an alchemy to take heart to the test. So I'm investigating two versus two. So I'm just looking for uh, failing so I can draw some cards. Maybe I'll draw into some blue deck. It's a minus one, so we fail. Uh, first thing we do is we gain two sources. We'll get two cards. Okay, and uh, I think uh, we get an extra action as per Stella. So I think I'll just play Granny Horn as our last action just to get her down. Uh, no enemies, we go to upkeep. Uh, we draw a card, another. And I terrain or snow, so that helps us investigate in early 
scenario and one resource. So that is the first turn. Let's go to the second turn. We add a doom to the agenda. Uh, the doom threshold is six, so one of six. And the first encounter card is uh, Hydra Brood. Okay, so Hydra Brood is a three by three health to evade enemy humanoid monster deep one spawn layer of Hydra or gateway of um, clay, whichever is farther from you. It is a hunter forced after Hydra Brood and Gates you if Hydra is in play, either place one Doom on Hydra or Hydra attacks you. Okay, so mm, a bit of a spoiler. We have Dagon and we have Hydra in this scenario. So I'll go over them a bit further later. So this uh, enemy spawns into the gateway. So it spawns here. Mm, we really don't mind it at this point. I think we're just running away from it. So I'm investigating neither rain nor snow uh, here first. So I'm investigating five versus two. It's a zero. We get this clue. Then we get this key. And it's the purple key, so not what we're looking for, but we'll need that later in the uh, scenario. Then, uh, because we succeeded, this becomes fully flooded. Also, the connecting locations increase their flood level, so the gateway is increased. This increases and this increases. Second action will move over to here. Okay, it's the tidal pool. It has one clue on it and there is one random key on it. And we are not using our track shoes to move again, so I think I'm just keeping the tempo up, so I'll commit uh, neither rain nor snow to the test again. Our second copy, so we are Investigating five versus four. So, not that good of a chance, but I, I'm hoping to get this clue. And it's a minus three. Unfortunately, we fail, but we'll get an extra action. So, the investigate move investigates. And uh, mm, I think I'm drawing a card. So we get another survival in six. Mm, not that helpful at the moment, but it is what it is. So enemy face will hunt here with this. Uh, we'll go to upkeep. We draw a card, another copy of track shoes, not helping, and one resource. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add a doom to the agenda. Counter card for this turn is uh, Treacherous Deaths Peril. You must either choose one, increase the flood level of your current location, discard assets from your play area with a total resource cost of at least X, where X is your location shroud value. Uh, I think I'm just raising the uh, flood level here. So unfortunately now it's a Shroud of 5, which is really tough for us. Um, I think the first action is to draw a card. Let's see. Actually, mm, let's back up. We really don't want to... Uh, we really don't want to raise this, because we really need that key. So I'm playing the a test of will to this test, so uh, this gets exiled, I'll just place it out of place somewhere here. So that gets cancelled, so we'll ca continue from here. Uh, first action will draw a card. Uh, Nightmare Bobo, mm, not the card I'm looking for. Uh, Let's 
see. I'll draw another card, then I think I'll move to run away from the Hydra's brood. Okay, so we hit the Nihilism, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. I think we'll move to this tidal tunnel, and it's the underground river. Um, it's partially flooded and with two clues. And I'll use the um, track shoes, try and move again, uh, 5 versus 3, minus 4, we unfortunately fail, so no extra movement. And uh, that is our investigative phase, uh, enemy phase, we'll hunt over here, upkeep, we draw a card, uh, belly of the beast. Okay, well, um, I think we could get that one clue by moving in and evading, so that's actually a great plan. And we'll gain one resource, so that is that turn, let's go to the next turn. We are at uh, 3 Doom of 6. The encounter card for this turn is uh, Fracture Consciousness. Uh, intellect 3, if you reveal a tablet, you automatically, automatically fail, if you fail, take 2 damage, okay, so, um, we really don't have anything to boost the intellect with, so I think the diving suit is just taking a bit of damage here, but I think we'll fail and we'll get extra action for this turn. Actually, we succeed, so it's a plus one, and uh, we just barely hit this, so that's really good. And uh, okay, first action, we'll move back here. The Hydra Brood engages us. After Hydra Brood engages you, if Hydra is in play, either place one. So Hydra isn't in play, so we'll just uh, evade. And I'll actually commit the track shoes to this test. So I'm uh, evading six versus two. And it's another plus one, so this enemy is evaded. Uh, we'll play Belly of the Beast. We'll grab this clue. We'll grab this key, it's the green key, so we still need the yellow key to advance, so hopefully we can find that. Mm -hmm. So this was bent here, and uh, last action, we'll move again, and we'll move back here. And we'll try to move again with the track shoes, so... Uh, 5 versus 3. And it's a 0, so we get an extra movement. And we find another Dark Abyss. So one clue, one extra key here. And that is our turn. Enemy phase, no actions there. Upkeep, this guy ready. We'll draw a card. Finally, we find some clue text, so old key ring and one resource. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, we are at four doom of six. And counter card for this turn is memory of oblivion. Uh, test will four or intellect four. If you reveal a elder thing token, you automatically fail. And for each card you uh, each point you fail by discard one card from your hand. So I'm not committing anything to this test, I'm just uh, testing it. And it's a tablet and it's a minus four. If you fail you must either increase the flood level of your location or take one damage. And uh, I'll increase the flood level because it would increase soon either way. 
and we fail we get an extra action and uh, minus four I was testing four versus four so we lose four cards which is quite bad um, yeah I think we need to keep the old key ring so we lose the nightmare bubble which is a shame we lose both of the survival instincts and we lose alter fate so um, yeah this is 10 points worth of experience lost so pretty bad but we uh, need the hearing to get the clues so uh, first action we'll play the hearing second action we'll use the hearing so investigating uh, two versus zero auto fail so unfortunately we take uh, one damage and one horror from the Nihilin. Um, actually, mm, yeah, that really sucks. Well, let's try again. Uh, it's a minus one, so we'll grab this clue. We will grab this key. So it's a white key, we still need to find the yellow key. And this increased, this can't be increased, and this is fully flooded. Last action, uh, we'll move over to here. And it's the tidal pool, so just the right place to have the last clue, we need, uh, last key we need. And that is all our whole turn. Uh, enemy phase, this uh, Hydra Brood hunts here. Upkeep. We'll draw a card. Granny Orn, not useful. We gain one resource. And that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, we are at 5, Doom of 6. Encounter card is a Lurking Deep One. So unfortunately the Lurking Deep One uh, hits us for one damage, so it goes automatically to the diving switch, which is a uh, bad thing. So I'll just put this over here and okay. Uh, first action. Let's evade this uh, lurking deep one. It's plus one, so we succeed. It is evaded. Second action, uh, we'll use the old key ring to uh, investigate. So we have a. Uh, actually, we only have this one action, but we need to move away from this uh, lurking deep one, and it's spawned in the an awful location because we really uh, need to. Uh, move away, then it readies and each time it engages us, we'll lose uh, help from the diving suit, which is a really bad thing. Okay, so uh, using the old key ring, we are investigating uh, two versus two. Luckily, it's a zero and this goes away, but we get this clue and uh, we get the last key. And um, last action, we'll move to the gateway of Yuan Slave. And uh, I decide to advance, so let's see what happens. So we have the blue, red, yellow and green key, so we advance. To Yuan Slave. A maelstrom of currents tugs at your flesh as you cross through the gateway. When you emerge on the other side, you are no longer in the simple tidal caverns beneath Devil Reef, but in inside a vast city with uh, the depths, a city of otherworldly alien architecture and surprisingly riches beyond your wildest imagination. Remove each location other than the gateway of Yuan Clay from the game, or add them to the victory display if they have a victory X and no clues remaining. Discard each card at 
those locations. Put the set aside locations into play as shown in the campaign guide following the Act 2 setup instructions. Note that the number of Yuantai locations used as and the arrangement of the location varies depending on the number of investigators in the game. Put the set aside Hydra enemy into play in the layer of Hydra. Deep in slumber play side face up. Put the set aside Dagon enemy into play in the layer of Dagon. Check campaign log if Dagon has awakened. He enters play at awaken and in rage side face up. Dagon still slumbers. He enters play deep slumber side face up. So uh, we have Dagon still slumbers in the campaign log. So uh, luckily we spawn Dagon as deep in slumber face up. So there is quite a lot of setup here in the mid game. So I'll pause the video for a moment, do the mid game setup and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have set up the uh, new locations and depending on the amount of players uh, we have in the game, uh, we will remove a few uh, locations from the game. So uh, if you would be playing as a four player game, the map would look like this. But we are playing as a solo, true solo game, so one player. So we remove three locations, which are the A, B, e, and C locations, and they are uh, shown in the campaign guide. So we'll remove these three locations, and then we will tidy up the map. So we'll move these here, and these over here, and these over here. So. As you can see, uh, they have uh, MJ has taken into account solo players, which is a really great thing, because uh, I hate that some scenarios earlier haven't scaled well for true solo, but this scenario takes into account that as a true solo investigator. You have a limit, more limited amount of actions to move around, and this is a big map again. So, uh, limiting the amount of um, locations uh, or tightening up the map uh, makes it <laughs> a po possibility to succeed in this scenario. Okay, well, uh, that was our last action, and we have uh, Hydra and Dagon in play. Let's check out them quickly. So, uh, Hydra. Uh, deep in slumber is a dash, 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 ancient one elite, Hydra is slumbering, she cannot attack or engage and is immune to investigator attacks, uh, actions and player card effects. Pause. At the end of the round, if an investigator is in layer of Hydra and Hydra is ready, place one doom on her. And uh, action test will power 4. If you succeed, either exhaust Hydra or remove one from her. If you fail by three or more, place one doom on her. And uh, Dagon is identical, so not much more to say about that. So we shouldn't linger in the layer of Dagon or layer of Hydra, because that adds doom to this if we don't have a way to exhaust them. Okay, well, that is the mid game setup done. Uh, no enemies, because those two enemies got discarded as the other locations got discarded. We didn't have any victory point locations, so everything went away and we have this map. And let's quickly look at the next Act 2. So, the objective is to stop the Deep One's ritual by draining the city, if each location in play is unplotted advance. And we have a fast triggered ability, either remove one damage, investigator from an ancient one enemy at your location or uh, investigators at a layer location spend one clues per investigator as a group decrease the flood level of any non sanctioned location in play and the layer keyword is really important there is only two layer locations and they are the layer of Dagon and layer of Hydra these are the sanctum locations they have uh, start the game in fully flooded and these Yuantle locations here, and well, the uh, gateway has the fully flooded from the er earlier act, 
but the Yuan Clay locations all start as partially flooded. And the only way to drain these is to get clues and go to the lair and do the fast trigger ability. And uh, there is no limit, so we should possibly get gather a lot of clues. We already have four, but gather more and then go quickly into lair of Dagon and spend all of them to remove all of these and so we don't have to do it again and again but more of that later and we still still don't know how to remove the, uh, any uh, flood levels from these sanctum locations but that will be revealed later no enemies upkeep we draw a card we get take heart we gain one resource that is that turn and let's go to the next turn uh, we add a doom, so we advance the agenda. Under the surface turns into maelstrom of mutation. So, shuffle the set aside Loigor and the set aside aquatic abomination enemy into encounter deck along with the encounter discard file. So we have these two enemies uh, set up separately. So we shuffle them in the encounter deck with the discard pile. Then uh, we have a Doom Threshold of 8 and the same for stability. So if we start at a fully flooded location and we don't enter a partially or non flooded location, we take 5 direct damage and we still have the diving suit to ignore that for stability for now. Encounter card for this turn is uh, Deep One Assault. So uh, we don't have any Deep One enemies. These are ancient one and elite. So we'll search the encounter deck. And I think I'll pull the Deep One Bull. Because our tactic is to just run away from enemies and this is an easy evade and non-hunter enemy. So we'll shuffle this like so. And it spawns on us and when this Engages, we have to discard a card from our hand. And it's going to be Granny Orn because we don't need it. Oh, yeah, and uh, we need uh, markers for Hydra and Dagon. So Dagon is here, and uh, Hydra is here. Okay, and We'll go to investigation phase, so first action will evade this deep one bull. Um, uh, evading 5 versus 2. And it's a skull, it's a minus 1 and minus 3 instead if there are 4 or more unflooded young clay locations. Well, there is only 2 at the moment, so there are the layer of Dagon and layer of Hydra. So we evade. And yeah, so we can move away. So we move to the Yantle location. And again, these are connected north, south, east, west. So we find sunken halls. And sunken hall is a two shroud location with one clue. If you control the black key, Place it on the sunken halls. After an enemy enters sunken halls, if the black key is on sunken halls, deal two damage to that enemy. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a black key. It is the last key, so it's uh, set aside because uh, we didn't do well enough in the campaign, so we have no access to the black key. But it is what it is, and uh, I'll use the track shoes so. I think we'll just try to uh, keep moving fast as, as fast as possible to find each location 
we need and um, I'll use the truck shoes, so 5 versus 3 it's minus 1 again and uh, let's move over here it is the under sea corridor Gunplay location action. If you control the white key, place it on the undersea corridors. Fast triggered ability. If the white key is undersea is on undersea corridors, move move to a connecting location. Limit once per round. And uh, oh, that was the second action. So uh, last action will just drop the key here, so we can use that action to move freely over here. Okay, so we find the CCG chamber. Uh, it's a four shot location with one clue. Action, if you control the red key, place it on this location and investigators here spend one clue per investigator as a group automatically evade each ancient one enemy. And plot this location for the remainder of the game. This location cannot be plotted. And forced after you any locations flood level is increased, each investigator at this location takes one horror. So mm, we don't want to be here when the flood level rises somewhere. Uh, no more actions. We'll uh, go to upkeep. Sky red is. Oh, yeah, there's one clue here. Oh, yeah, I placed it already. Uh, we draw a card. Resourceful. We gain one resource, and that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add a doom, and count card for this turn is. It is the tidal alignment peril revelation. Choose a location where there is at least one investigator. Increase that location's flood level. Each investigator at the chosen location takes one damage. If the chosen location's flood level is not increased by this effect, this uh, gain surge. So we are at a fully flooded location, so we'll draw another, another card. Deep one assault. So disengage from each deep one enemy at the location. Each deep one enemy at your location and each connecting location in case no enemies engage you from this effect. Search and counter deck and discard power for deep one enemy. Spawn it. Okay. Mm. Let's see. Um, there are none in the discard, so let's see what are our options. Okay, so we pretty much have to pick the lurking deep one, uh, either the Hydra Brutes or the uh, Dagon Brutes add Doom to either Hydra or Dagon. So this unfortunately means that the lurking deep one will break for diving suit, which is a shame. Uh, now we have to mind the loaded status of each uh, of the locations, so we don't take the direct damage penalty. Okay, so this engages us, it breaks the timing switch, so this goes out of play. So that is the Mythos phase, we'll go to the investigation phase, so First action is to evade this guy, and I'll use the resourceful to evade. Okay, this is ready, so evading uh, 6 versus 4. It's a minus 2. This is evaded. We trigger resourceful, we'll get the old key ring. Uh, take it into hand. Second action, we'll drop the red key here. Spend one clue. Uh, both of these are exhausted. Or, yeah. And uh, we. Mm, we unflood this location fully. Last action will move to 
this location here. It is the submerged temple. So it's a 5 shroud location with one clue. Each deep one enemy at this location gets plus 2 fight action. Uh, if you control the green key, place it on this location and investigators here spend one clues as a group automatically evade each ancient one enemy unflawed this location for the remainder of the game. This location cannot be flooded. Okay, and uh, it is a fully flooded location. One clue. And uh, that is our turn. No enemy actions. Upkeep. This guy ready is over here. Just placed over here. Probably won't go into that location anymore. And uh, these are ready also. Uh, we draw a card. We get look what I found, which is really good actually. Gain one resource. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add a doom. Encounter card for this turn is Tidal Alignment. So again, we can't uh, increase the flood level, so it searches. <laughs> and it's another lurking deep one. So uh, this is so annoying. Uh, we are pulling all the annoying things we can find. Oh well, uh, I think this is going to be a repeat of the last round. Uh, so, first action is to evade, and uh, because this might fail, I'll use take heart for this test. Uh, 5 versus 4, so we are 1 up. 0, uh, succeed, so take heart doesn't trigger, but this enemy is evaded. So, yeah. Mm. Second action will drop a key here. So this required one clue and the green key. So it's fully uh, un unflooded. And uh, okay, so I think we have to go to the layer of Dagon. So I'll move here. And uh, it's a six shroud location with three clues. And uh, uh, let's actually look at it closer. So six shroud, three clues, layer of Dagon gets minus one shroud for each sanctum location with a key on it. So there is two, so it's only a shroud of four. Uh, check camp analog. If all seven keys are on locations and the order of ritual was disrupted, you dig deep into your memories to recall what happened the last time you were here. Read flashback uh, 16 in the campaign guide. Uh, unfortunately, there is no way for us to get uh, all of the seven keys in play because one is set aside. So uh, we can't get the ultimate resolution for this scenario, but it is what it is. It's quite difficult to get. I already checked how you get it. And uh, uh, we moved here, but we'll use the track shoes to move again. It's a uh, minus three, so unfortunately we fail, but we'll get an extra action, which we'll just use to move here, and then we'll use the key to move here. Or actually, um, let's just not move there, we'll just move over here, so we can reveal this one. So it's the und undersea corridors again, so the same as that, but the key is already there, so we can't place it on this. Or, hmm. 
uh, this reads actually uh, if the key, white key is on undersea corridors, and it is, it's on the other one. So move, move to a connecting location, it wants per round. So I will play it so that because it's over on this undersea corridors, we can also use this one. So next turn we could just move again uh, for free, but <clears throat> that is for next turn. So uh, enemy phase, nothing happens, we go to upkeep. Uh, we draw a card, uh, lucky, that's really good, and we gain one resource. So that is that turn, let's go to the next turn. We add a doom to the agenda. Uh, and counter card for this turn is Ancient Evil, so we just add another doom. Uh, that means we just lost one round. Unfortunately, I would have liked to cancel that with some uh, with a test of will, but uh, it is what it is. Mm. Let's see here what we can do. So mm, I think we'll just play down the old key ring. Or actually, let's not play it down yet. Have another plan. So we'll move into the layer of Hydra. So layer of Hydra, same thing as with the layer of Dagon. Uh, layer of Hydra gets minus one shroud for each sanctum location with a key on it. Uh, double. Uh, Action place the black, purple, or white key on this location, deal 3 damage to an ancient one enemy that is not slumbering. So group limit once per game. Well, we don't have that possibility. Uh, or we have, but I think we are uh, saving that key for other stuff. Okay, um, I think we are investigating here. and. Uh, reason is because I have the lucky, so we can pretty surely get the look what I found. Figure it. So I'm investigating two versus four, so I'm uh, two behind. Mm. So uh, two behind, and it's a minus three. That is okay, because we can use Lucky, level 3, and it gives us plus 3 to the skill value of the test. So we only fail by 2, and we also draw a card. So uh, we are failing by 2, but we'll play the look what I found. Grab 2 clues from here. Also, we failed an action, so we'll get an extra action. Well, failed a skill test, I mean. So, we still have two um, actions remaining. I think I will spend uh, two clues at this moment to just fast trigger ability. Use the action here to lower this twice just to get it unloaded. Then uh, we'll move over here and uh, onyx guardians during the enemy phase each ready ancient one enemy can attack investigators here as if they were engaged action if you control the yellow key place it on this location and investigators spend one full year as group automatically they each ancient one enemy control this location for the remainder of the game this can be Loaded again. So, last action we will spend one clue, drop the yellow key here, and uh, these are evaded. So, they can't attack, but also they are slumbering, so they wouldn't have had an attack either way. And uh, one key. key is there, and there's one clue there. And I think we'll try to grab that clue actually. 
next turn with the key ring. So that is all of our actions. No hunting enemies will go to upkeep. Uh, these ready. I will draw a card. It is the mysterious raven. Really good. Gain one resource. And that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add a doom. So 5 of 8. Encounter card for this turn is a Memory of Oblivion. So uh, we'll test the willpower for. Um, I think I'll go willpower 5. Uh, 5 versus 4. And uh, we really don't want to lose our blue deck at this point. So it's a minus one, so we barely succeed. And uh, that is that. Uh, first action will play the old key ring. Second action will play the raven. And the last action will investigate here using the key ring. So zero, uh, two versus zero. It's a uh, minus four. If you fail, uh, we don't fail. So we'll spend one, get this clue. And that is that turn. Uh, no enemy actions. We'll go to upkeep. So we draw a card. Uh, Wayborn Idol. That is okay. Not really necessary, but it actually gives us intellect and wild so it will be useful for investigating again also one resource so that is that turn let's go to the next turn uh, we are at six tomb of eight and counter card for this turn is uh, treacherous deaths um, increase the flood level of your current location it is not possible so we have to discard so it's two I think, well, I, I unfortunately we have to discard Granny Orn because uh, Traxus is just too valuable in this scenario. So uh, we lose Granny Orn for the uh, Treacherous Deaths. Okay, so first action. Uh, we'll move to the next young play Sanctum, and it is the Statues in the Deep. If you uh, if you control the pool key, place it on this location and investigators here spend one clue per investigator as a group, automatically evade each engine for an enemy, unflawed this location for the remainder of the game, this location cannot be flooded, uh, forced after you fail a skill test while investigating this location, take one damage. Okay, uh, one clue here. And uh, we'll spend one clue, drop the key, unload this location, then uh, I think we will, uh, let's count, we need one, two, three, four, so all the other locations are unloaded, so now we need four clues total to uh, move in here, for example, or here, and unflawed everything to win the scenario so I think we are investigating here I'm using the old key ring and I'm committing the way for an idol for this test so I'm investigating uh... mm, okay so we moved and then we used the action there the last action. Uh, mm, I think I'm taking a risk. I'm not using the theory. So I'm investigating four versus three. So we need just need to hit the zero or plus one or a minus one or the elder sign. So not that great of a chance. Uh, I think 
yeah, uh, let's just use the keyring. I think it's too uh, big of a chance to fail. So two uh, three versus one. It's a minus one. So uh, this is used. The keyring goes away. I uh, will still get this clue. That is our turn. No enemy actions. We will go to upkeep. Uh, we draw a card. Uh, snare trap doesn't help us that much. And we gain one resource. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, we are at 7 of 8 doom. And count card for this turn is uh, Sisichi. I think I'll just uh, lose the three resources. Or uh, we could take the horror, actually. I'll take the horror. I, I have still plenty of horror so left. Okay. So we need two more uh, clues. So first action. I will move to this location. And it is the Vault of Riches. It's a four shard location with two clues. If you control the purple key, place it on Vault of Riches. Then choose a non-elite enemy at any location. Automatically raid that enemy and move it to Vault of Riches. That enemy does not ready during the next upkeep phase. Uh, I think we are not doing that. But we are uh, using the track shoes to move again. And before testing, we'll discard the raven. Grab one clue from here. So we still need one more clue. So uh, let's test. Uh, I'm testing five versus three. Zero. So we move over here. So that was the first action. And uh, uh, we spent the raven, so we took one horror. I think I forgot. Yeah, so I think we have four more horror left. Uh, then we'll uh, investigate. So we are trying to investigate two versus two. So zero plus one, anything. And uh, skulls are actually minus three now. Mm, yeah, so it's a zero, so we grab this last clue. Last action, uh, we'll move down here. We'll actually, we'll move here and trigger that ability to freely move over here. Trigger the ability to spend a clue to lower a level of Yuan Clay location. Spend a Another clue, remove this, spend another clue, remove this, spend another clue, remove this. So we have zero flooded locations in play. Just double checking. Yes, and stop the deep one ritual by draining the city. Each location in play is unflooded. Advance. Shattering the alignment. The seas part with a roaring torrent. Chill and uh, chill air flows through the corridors of Yon Clay as it rises. When the stars look down upon its alien emerald hall, something in the air changes. There is a sound like a snap at the and the hissing of air be being pulled through the vacuum of space. Then, like automobiles lurching to life, the earth and the moon begin to move once more. Add this card to the victory display. If there is another act card in play, you may choose to either continue playing or in order to accomplish the objective on that card or proceed immediately to resolution 1 without fulfilling that objective. There are no other act cards in play, proceed to resolution 1. So this goes into the victory display and will go to resolution one and uh, I won't spoil how you get the other act cards in play so there's something uh, to discover on yourself but uh, all I can say is that I didn't have a chance to get those 
parts in play. So, uh, resolution one. Uh, you frantically make your way back to the entrance of the undersea city, hoping desperately to escape alive. You feel the familiar tugging of the currents all around you as you emerge on the other side of the otherworldly threshold. Your heart does not stop racing until you finally break the surface of the water and collapse on an out outcropping of rock. In your campaign log record, the investigators escaped Yuan Fei. Add both Dagon and Hydra to the victory display. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. So this goes into the victory display and well they are zero. Uh, each investigator suffers two physical trauma from their ordeal beneath the waves. Check if act two B shattering the alignment is in the victory display. Um, so this was the shattering of uh, alignment, so we proceed to resolution 2. As you emerge from the cavern of Devil Reef and look upon into the sky, you are relieved to see the sun and the moon no longer in alignment. The tide e appears to be retreating as well. The seas seem to have finally calmed. In your campaign log record, the plot of the Deep Ones was thwarted. The investigators win the campaign. Uh, check if another act card is in the victory display. Well, it isn't, so that is that. Okay, so um, as you could see, uh, Stella was able to defeat this campaign, uh, or the last scenarios of this campaign uh, quite easily. So um, the real uh, tactic in this scenario is to have all the require clues once you have to go into a lair location to trigger this ability. I have no idea how the other uh, act cards work because I didn't have a chance to get them in play, but uh, you can see that uh, we still had one more act card, uh, agenda card to go after this one, so and that had like 10 uh, Doom Threshold on it, so we had plenty of time to complete this scenario, but we didn't get the hidden ending, so to speak, so there is still a lot of things to reveal in this campaign, and um, I'll just give my brief um, thoughts about this campaign uh, now. Uh, as you maybe if you followed my Sister Mary playthrough, uh, the deck I was using then uh, was not really well suited for this campaign playing Stella. I opted to go uh, with the evade tactic and just evade everything, run away, uh, get clues however you can, and keep moving. And that tactic paid off really well. Uh, Stella also has quite good uh, health and sanity soaks, so those engage actions that uh, deal you damage or horror are not that bad with Stella. Uh, I used some cards that I usually don't never use, so Snare Trap, for example, the hide, hiding spots or, or something like those. Yeah, hiding spots. And uh, then we had the Alter Fates, which are really good in those scenarios, you have the vehicle that can malfunction, so you can just Alter Fate and fix it, uh, because Stella is quite bad at fixing it with the intellect. And uh, yeah, Survival Instinct, if you get flooded with enemies, you can just get away with Survival Instinct and stuff like that. So I really enjoy that you have to build your deck quite differently for this scenario to be successful instead that you just kill everything, because this is such a heavy enemy campaign that uh, if you try to kill everything, like for example here we had like three enemies in play and uh, well, let's not count these two so uh, three enemies in play, we just uh, evaded them and ran away and forgot about them, of course if they were hunter enemies they would follow us, but uh, we were constantly moving Fractures kept us going and uh, other stuff let us 
freely move more than usual. So all in all, I really like this uh, this campaign as a whole. There is one scenario I'm not a big fan of, and that is Devil Reef. Uh, the boat in that just doesn't work well. I've played it as true solo a couple of times and also as multiplayer a few times and every time it's just a pain in the ass scenario. Uh, in Too Deep is really good. The deluxe box scenarios, the vanishing of Elena Harper and Pit of Despair are really good scenarios both. Uh, vanishing is maybe one of my favorites in this uh, campaign. Uh, I just love the randomness of it and the replayability uh, of the Cluedo or Clue, so to speak, board game version of Arkham. And uh, then uh, uh, Horror in a High Gear is really something. After you learn the mechanics, it's a really enjoyable scenario. Uh, I have to say I had to play it a couple of times to learn the uh, mechanics and play it right. Uh, a uh, light in the fog scenario might surprise you, so um, because that that scenario has the um, mid campaign death possibility in it, so it, it surprised me with Sister Mary that I just died in it. But uh, luckily, Stella was ab able to get past that to Layer of Dagon. Uh, Layer of Dagon wasn't the best scenario for this campaign, but it, it was still a decent uh, scenario, not bad in any way, yeah, you just have to be fast in that one. And this one is uh, a good good scenario, not my favorite ending scenario of a campaign by far, but still a good scenario, nothing, nothing bad about it. I really like that they implemented uh, true solo uh, mechanics that help you in true solo, so this uh, scenario uh, makes the map more tight in true solo than in multiplayer and uh, in vanishing for example in this campaign uh, you only have to complete one of the tasks in the last act to advance which is really fair for true solo and uh, then uh, in uh, I think there was something in A Light in the Fog that made it a bit easier for True Solo. I just blanking out which was it. But I think Lair of Dagon also had something that made it easier with uh, True Solo. Uh, the keys work pretty well. I, I enjoyed also the flawed mechanic. Nothing bad to say about that. Uh, Bless and Curse I really like. They are interesting mechanics and make you build your deck quite differently. But, um, well, I've seen all the cards for Bless and Curse and not talking about those that much in this playthrough video. But uh, they are. Uh, Bless and Curse is a good mechanic, so nothing bad to say about that. All in all, I think. This is my second favorite scenario from this point on, uh, until something better comes out. Carcosa is always <laughs> maybe going to be my favorite, just because Haster and the uh, campaign are my favorites. Well, Haster is my favorite and the campaign scenarios in that are so good. There is basically one bad scenario and that is the uh, echoes of the past scenario. Everything else is quite, quite entertaining for me. Uh, but in this campaign there is also only one that I dislike and that's not even that bad and it's the Devil Reef. But I really thank you guys for watching this video. As always, if you have any comments, uh, leave them down below in the comment section. Thanks for watching and until next time.